Cold at the touch, dead in the eyes. No signs of life, no more. I pull at your love under the knife. Leave me to die here all alone. No signs of life, no more. No, a crying dove may never fly. Just let me go, it's only right for all I know It's only matter, it's calico, it's black and white White, white, white Just let me go, it's only right for all I know It's only matter, it's calico, it's black and white White, white, white Good evening, everybody, and welcome back to Sim Racers World TV, and welcome to the Sunday Drivers MX5 series. My name is Chaz Draycott. Alongside me in the commentary box again this evening is Jack Werrell. Now, Jack, it's been a couple of weeks since we last commentated on this championship, and well, it was uh, it was an amazing race last time out, and of course, you and Hassa enjoyed similar racing a few weeks back as well, but. This championship goes strength to strength, even as it gets close to its end, doesn't it? 
It, it does. I think that's just the nature of the championship. The cars are very, very similar. Obviously, only around 180 brake horsepower, so not a massive amount of power, but very light as well, which is the perfect formula for really close racing. And as the drivers get used to the car, used to the tracks and, and used to each other, because that's a massive part of, of motorsport, having trust in your competitors. And as that grows, everybody's just getting quicker and quicker and quicker. They are indeed. And what a circuit to come to for the penultimate round of the season. Round 13 here at Lime Rock Park. And as you can see, everybody, we're using the full chicane configuration. So the drivers have the chicane at the bottom of the hill, where it's normally just a fast right-hander. Very tricky to get that corner right. And then you've got what they call the West Bend chicane as well. So we will show you the, uh, the configuration in just a moment. But before we do any of that, I must show you the fact that we have two people pretty much ready to take the championship. And there's only, only one point between Andrew Lovesy and Louis Correa at the moment. It's so, so close, you couldn't honestly write it. But it's very clear that it's going to be just these pair that are fighting for the overall title now, with these two rounds to go. But Andrew Lovesy, very importantly, is not here this evening. So it's Louis Correa's chance to overcome that gap and take back the championship lead that he once held quite a while ago, I believe. Jack, it's been a bit of a topsy-turvy season for him, hasn't it? It has. I think that was assisted by uh, by the race at Silverstone where he was racing with his teammate, Dan Mould, um, and the, the Simulation Racing League car, League's cars have carried momentum since then. And missing tonight is is really played into the hands of Louis Correa, and we know he's quick. He's been extremely consistent while being quick, always at the top end of the order. I think the only sort of negative finish he had was at the end of the Laguna Seca round. But for for the most part, Louis Correa has done exactly what he needs to do to put him in this position. And this late on in the season, to have a no-show for your main rival, it's just opened the door for him to to get up to the front. But you've got to remember, SRL, as they've been getting quicker, they've also brought in new talent. Cali Cavisto recently joined the team, and look at him now, provisional pole. Yeah, he's absolutely smashing it at the moment. Just having a quick look on board now with Louis Correa. Just coming through the first section of the lap. Now, this bit looks normal to anybody that knows Lime Rock from previous. There's a car going off in front of him. But this chicane is one of the new additions here, and it's very difficult to get right. Big curbs either side. The car can get very unsettled by that over the crest of the hill. The circuit isn't even straight there. I'm sort of leaning up, look, trying to look over the top of my monitor to try and see over the top of the hill into the West Bend chicane. And it's double apex, so you take it slowly through the first right, clip the second. Then make sure you get a better curb on the left-hand side. You can cut that slightly, but not too much. And then we're back onto the layout that everybody knows and loves. Around the final corner, which, let's face it, no one has ever got right every single time. And across the line once again for Louis Correa. But only 65 thousandths off the top spot. Sander Ware is currently third. He's doing a good job at the moment. But Louis, by the look of it, no, he does not improve. Now we've got undefined Rodriguez <laughs> a little bit further down the order. That I'll, uh, that I'll have to sort out. Oh, that's Alvaro. Rodriguez but um, I mean we we've seen drivers come in and out of this championship quite well to be fair more in than out if anything because uh, the, the championship's been very attractive to a lot of these guys haven't it it, it has and it's, I think it's just the the experience that you get in this car as soon as you get on the iRacing service you get given two options go to oval racing or go to road racing and if you decide to go through the road category of of motorsport you've got to start in these Mazda Mazda MX-5s and I know there's been various update as as the seasons have gone through whether it be to the tire model the damage model anything that affects the car's performance but you've still had that valuable seat time in this car so going into a, a series a, and a league that adopts these cars around some of the circuits that you would have raced on as well it, it just it i think it just gives everybody that extra bit of confidence maybe to push a little bit harder and you never know they might be more competitive than they think and i think that's why we've seen the championship just boom as we go into the latter stages indeed and uh well we know that uh, david Geddes has had a lot of different liveries over his season but he's got a chrome flame design now so it's like matte flames on the front and the rest of the car is chrome blue so another interesting design from David Geddes. We've got Ben Hicks for Fast Cars Go Bang. Now we've seen some of these guys racing in a number of leagues. Uh, Louis Correa actually races for Fast Cars Go Bang in the Sim Racers World Formula 3 series. And these guys, you know, they've got uh, they've got good potential. Michael Ellett is uh, a very, very popular choice for me at the moment. He's racing in my British Boring Car Championship, racing a, well, a replica uh, Renault Laguna 
from 1999. And we now have qualifying for you, everybody. So we're going to have cars flying out in circuit. There was a glimpse at the gnome that we all gnome and love. But here is Ben Hicks, then. We'll, we'll go on board with him, shall we, Jack, just to see this first lap, because it's the first lap on cold tyres. It's always a bit sketchy, isn't it? Yeah, it's very slidey, especially with the new tyre model that's been put on these cars. And like I said, they're very, very light. They're under 1,000 kilos. I think they're under even 900 kilos. And with all the weight over the front as well, with it being uh, with it being front engine, that rear end can get very lively on very cold tyres. And then even if the, the front end grips up, that's just going to worsen the, the the rear grip as well so you can see lots of different bits that the drivers have got to cope with you can see it turns in beautifully because obviously all the weight is over the front so it'll warm up quicker and it's naturally got that that front end balance so you can chuck it in but if you do it if you overdo it and maybe touch the grass on the outside as you can see there you'll end up sideways into most of the corners and you've got to remember the guys will have to deal with this throughout the race as well as we get as they pull away from the line they can get a bit of heat into the rears but going through this exact section of circuit two maybe even three wide which we've seen before on cold tires it's going to be a very very challenging first couple of laps it is indeed it's going to be certainly an interesting one to keep an eye on just trying to get uh, a number here where is he i'm trying to find the uh, he's, there's nobody coming up on the track map yet because no one's set a time, so it's a bit of a waste of uh, waste of graphics there, isn't it, from me? But you can just see the it's a newly resurfaced circuit as well compared to a lot of the others on iRacing, and it's quite recent. But they didn't scan it for a while, did they? Because of the fact that there were so many real life updates to Lime Rock, they they couldn't really keep up with it, could they? No, I think it's because it's so often used by, by up-and-coming American talent. Obviously, the circuit is owned and operated by Skip Barber, the people that also make the Formula 2000, which is also uh, also on iRacing. So a lot of driving talent in America is put through, uh, put through its paces at Lime Rock in those cars, and you can really learn a little or a lot, and from the basics right up to the professional level of motorsport, how to handle a race car. So... The, the, the company, uh, the pilot, Skip Barber, have got to make sure the track is at the cutting edge of challenge, but also safety, which means updating consistently to meet the regulations, which is why I think it was so long before we saw our iRacing finally go, right, stop a second, let us get our scanners <laughs> in, do it, and then you can carry on. Yeah, indeed. They uh, they did need to sort of say, right, just hang on a minute, mate. Um, <laughs> Sander Ware, currently top of the pile after the first set of laps have come in. He's over four tenths clear. Oh, a bit of contact there with, I believe that was the number, was it number 52 I saw there? I believe I may be mistaken. He's got a number on the windscreen, but not on the front of the car. It's a it's a pink car. That's about all we know about it. Here's Arturo De Villa, who's down in 15th place at the moment, 16 seconds off the pace. Ashley Gefail. Hopefully he's not failing, but he's done a fine job at the moment. Cali Cavisto, there he goes, top of the pile. 78,000 clear and then off at turn one to go and celebrate on the grass but um, Ashley Gafail, he's one of the new drivers to the series isn't he Jack and to be honest that's quite a Rothmans-esque livery if you ask me I quite like that it is. I was expecting to see a Rothmans, uh, a Rothmans logo on the side of the car, but got to say it does look good on the on the Mazda. And yeah, he's doing a brilliant job. Like I say, a newcomer to the series, and to only be one and a half tenths off provisional pole in one of your your first rounds, and pushing Edge. the limits there, you can see <laughs> coming out of this, you gain sideways, managed to get the moment collected up and and get out of everybody's way. But to be that competitive and well, that confident that you can push the car to its absolute limits so early into into the the league. It's, it's great to see. Is indeed. Henrico Puttenstein manages to, well, put himself further up the order into eighth position, make that ninth as Michael Ellett goes sixth. Matt Tempest just behind him on track is just ahead of him on the grid at the moment in the Simtech racing machine. And anyone that's a fan of Sim Racers World shall not get this man confused with Bart Daleman, Sven Dalemans in the Stage 1 racing car. Is Rob Jackson, another one of the Simtech racing drivers. He's 16th at the moment. And Robert van den Heuvel. Now, we've been spending most of the season apologising to Robert for the fact that his name never shows up correctly on every aspect of the overlay. But we've got it at the bottom left for him this evening. And I think Hassa had the same last week, which was nice. So he at least gets to see his full name somewhere. But we apologise. <laughs> Get out of the way, mate. Wow. that was uh, I think that was the number five car, was it, that he was going past there? It was one of the H20 machines. 
very desperate to, to make sure they get out of the way. Where oh, there he is, Xavi Lopez. Yeah, Xavi Lopez deciding to get out of the way nicely. Um, but um, but yeah, it's it's good to see that the drivers, even after the three weeks break in between each round, they they've clearly been putting in the time. And someone that's put in a very good time is Michael Elliott, right to the top end God. of the order, the number thirty-four, a one minute six point six zero. I thought Calakavis though oh. was quick. Let's go even quicker, <laughs> shall we? Louis Correa, the Venezuelan, up onto provisional pole position, a one minute six point four seven. So Michael Elliott going six hundredths quicker, and then Louis Correa said, "Oh, you think that's good? Let me show you how he's done," and goes a oh. tenth quicker. As he has to worry about Ash Ashley Gafail having a bit of a fail, but um, Michael Ellett, you know, it must be all that uh, all that driving of the VW Jetta, you know, front wheel drive prowess it prepares you for rear wheel drive prowess. But um, no, in all seriousness, though, it's good to see him up there. And again, we've got this battle, haven't we? The top four: there's two H20 esports racing cars and two simulation racing leagues cars. So there's a good battle up there. Dan Mould as well. He's 80. Sorry, he's not in 80th. Sorry. <laughs> He's in car 80 in P7 at the moment. He is just under half a second off the top spot. But around here, I mean, a minute long lap, It's it can be qu considered quite a big gap, really, can't it, half a second? I think, yeah, it's it's a tricky one, really, because the, the shorter the circuit and then the bigger the... And even if you go to like Nürburgring GP and you've got a tenth there that's very little but on a little circuit like this it's only what one and a half miles a tenth can be a massive difference but in a car which is not exactly the most powerful thing in the world it definitely won't be setting any records I think the tenth can be more easily lost than gained but if you play your cards right you can go probably two three tenths quicker so it's it's a really tricky one as Sander Ware decides yeah you know what as we're explaining tenths let me just go a tenth quicker one minute six point three five zero Car one, P1 at the moment. Sander will be very happy with that. He's been trying to just eke out that win this season. He says he had a win last season, and that was at Silverstone. But uh, he was telling us before that one, he sort of dug his own grave a little bit with that because he was like, oh, the last time I won, we were here at Silverstone. I'd love to do it again. And he had an absolute mare when they went there. So hopefully it goes a little bit better for him tonight. Just outside of the top 10 then, we've got Harry Bowen in the Fast Cars Go Bang machine with what looks like the wrong paint uploaded there's no other words for it i'm afraid david Geddes in 12th place he's followed then by javi lopez in 13th the number three car we then have sebastian hayne who we had our eyes on earlier on in the season especially when we went to pocono he was very entertaining was the german driver for power hall sim racing academy rob jackson is behind him in the simtech racing car then it's alvaro rodriguez ahead of robert van den Heuvel, sven not bart dalemans and Jason Guerrara, another Simtech racing car, and Timo Payer. Timo was right up there in certain rounds, wasn't he? I mean, again, going back to Pocono, we saw a great performance from him there, but not quite the same here, I'm afraid. No, you'd expect him to be slightly more competitive than he is, he is being at the moment. Whether that's just some sort of uh, some something that's happened, and like just in in his pri private life uh, that has affected his uh, amount of practice or something like that, or he's just decided to to take it easy towards the latter end of the season. I don't know, but it could be strategy as well. We know that the, that these drivers like to get their elbows out and they like to trade a bit of paint. And if Timo Pai is happy to start towards the tail end of the grid and just let it all unfold in front of him, it's not a bad call actually because we see. Lots of or lots of minor incidents, but occasionally a few major incidents, which which wipe out a fair few cars. And Timo tends to be the one that has the the under the radar performances that I think put him up towards the pointy end of the order, which is why we notice him. So I wouldn't rule him out just as yet. But Timo, I I, I, I wish he does it. I wish he he has a good race because he deserves it. He's he's pretty much here every single week, and he's always in the practice sessions as well. Um, and he really does deserve some some good results and more importantly some good points because we're we're going into the latter stage of the season. So there's this is where getting every single point can can really change how you finish in the season. Yeah, that's it. And the the consistency is what Sander was talking to us about during the week and the fact that Cali Cavisto, based on the consistency, he's not actually raced in as many rounds as Andrew Lovesy or even Louis Correa, but based on his performance per race meeting. If he'd have done the whole season, he'd be right up there in with a shout of it as well. So another one to keep an eye on. Fourth place at the moment. It's a H20 Esports Racing front row from the two SRL cars. And then two privateers, Roberto Garcia and his very bright yellow and green livery that we've come to love against Ashley Gafail in that one. And a very nerdy one here. A nerdy reference to what that car looks like that 
maybe I think Jack will get, but I don't think anyone else will get. It looks like an old Britannia 757. I knew you were going <laughs> to say that. I knew that was going to happen. I was looking at it thinking, oh, hang on a minute, I think I know what's on his way. And yes, <laughs> yes, it does. And he even goes up towards the tail of the car like it's going to go up the uh, the vertical upright. But a livery I am yeah. rock fond of is uh, are the H20 liveries. They all look exactly the same on first glance. But if you just look at them for a little longer, you can see all the mirrors are slightly different. I haven't managed to get used to who's got which mirrors. Thank uh, thankfully, I don't have to really because I've got the the amazing SDK software to to see. But well, Sandoval sliding his way through Oof. turn one with the with the um, Dutch flag on on his wing mirrors, and I've got to say those cars they well they did look good until Sandoval decides to throw it off the road <laughs> and then cover it in graph and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, they look better when they're on the black stuff rather than uh, rally cross cars, to be honest. Ben Hicks improves, so fast cars go up to seventh, should be the new team name as things stand, but you'd be changing it a lot. Pedro Marimon goes in to 20th place. Now, Pedro made himself a bit of a nuisance for some of the other drivers at Silverstone, as Jack will remember, so the Dazzle camo is uh, definitely needed. Uh, the slowest qualifying car at the moment, not to point it out to him, Arturo de Villa the Mexican driver at the moment in car seven, currently down in 23rd place, but we've not had times from Amanul Labakas, uh, Martin Penerero and Jordanin Svetanov, three of the greatest racing driver names in the championship. Dan Mould has just jumped up to third place now. So another SRL car in the top five as Cali Cavisto then outdoes his teammate as well. So, I mean, look at those three together there, Jack. There's, what, 29 thousandths of a second between them? That's scary close, isn't it? it? It really is. I think that's just because they've practiced for like together for so, so long. And I always see them in, in their Discord chats, always like chatting away. And whether they are practicing at the, ta at the same time, I don't know. But it would surprise me if they don't, because they're always so, so close. And we saw out at Silverstone where it was Andrew Lovesy and Dan Mole trading for the lead every single lap. And bearing in mind they're teammates and you're going into the the final few races and you're one of them is the championship leader the last thing you'd want to do is have to race your teammate but they were just happy going away at it and they were pulling away from the cars behind as well which i think just echoes their their confidence to the other drivers and if you are looking up the road you see two teammates battling away and not even bothering to think that you're that, that you might be catching I, i'd take that as maybe a, a few warning shots because it shows that they're comfortable in the car they're confident to race door to door with somebody that is close to them and that matters for the championship and they're still racing quicker than you you've got to think well i've got to pull my finger out here this is only a few rounds left and if i want to get this championship i really need to go for it yeah that's it there's there's a lot to it and it is all about mind games i i always do come back to saying it is about mind games in motorsport but it really is and if you can get into the head of your I was going to say enemies, but if you can get into the head of your competitors, then, yeah, it really can sort of put them under all sorts of pressure. And it can affect results in ways you haven't maybe considered. I just want to point out as well, by the way, the fact that at the moment we have got six different nationalities in the top six. We've got Sanderware from the Netherlands. We've got Louis Correa, the Venezuelan. Cali Cavisto from Finland. We've then got the Brit, Dan Mould. He's followed by the South African driver, Michael Ellett, and then Roberto Garcia from Spain in sixth place. So we've got this incredibly international grid, haven't we? I mean, we've got a Canadian driver in David Geddes. We've got Sebastian Hayne, he's German. Sven Dalemans is Belgian. Uh, Jason Guerrara from America. Arturo de Villa from Mexico. Jordanin Svetanov as well from Bulgaria. It's probably the most international grid that I've seen in the Sim Racing League. Don't you agree? Yeah, 100%. There's 12 different na nationalities on the grid tonight, and we haven't even got a full grid. Only 26 cars have, uh, have registered for the session, and normally we can, if we, if everybody rocks up, I think we're closer to sort of 32. Um, so we might even have more nationalities that, that arrive then. And to see that a, a little, well, not necessarily a little league, no. but a league that <laughs> can commonly be seen for for whether it be rookies to iRacing or people just trying to enjoy a league and to see it multi as multinational as it is. Oh, there was contact there. I don't think there was. I didn't think there was on, on first glance, but that was Matt Temple going into the tail end of one of the, the H20 cars. But yeah, to see the amount of nationalities in what is almost a rookie series, it shows that not just this league is multinational, but iRacing, it brings in such a crowd and it just puts pay to, to how good their, their service is. Yeah, it does. And again, just shows you how well it runs as well when people are racing each other from all over the world. I mean, 
we've always said about how natural iRacing looks in terms of the movement of the cars and how well all the data is handled. It's just fantastic. And the way it's translated into visuals of the cars behaving the way they do as well. I love it. Absolutely do love it. And this championship again proving that. This is Amanullah Bacchus. I'm sorry if I'm getting your name wrong, mate. 23rd at the moment. This is his first round of the championship. And he is in the number 57 machine. Him and... Oh, Martin Penarero has made it out on track. There he is in the number four car. He's gone that fast that the number boards have slipped back. And uh, Jordan Svetanov is the only car that hasn't gone out and put a lap in yet. So I do hope we see him because he's a very exciting driver, as I found out when I did the very first... Sunday Drivers MX5 series broadcast here on Sim Racers World TV at Okayama. I think Jordanin came from something like 30th on the grid and finished second in one of the races. He was absolutely flying. Um, that just that does give me a bit of a uh, a sort of nudge to myself to point out. In these MX5s, the racing is that close and that competitive, and you can make up places by just playing it safe and just doing the mind games right. I once watched a. Uh, I broadcasted an MX-5 race in the BSR MX-5 series. And there was a gentleman called Charlie Summers. As Wow, Amanullah goes up to ninth. He'll be very happy with that one. Um, Charlie Summers started... They used to do reverse grids. Some of them were full reverse grids of 44 cars. Uh, some of them were down to, say, 12. And there was a full reverse grid of 44. And he started 44th on the grid. In the third race of the evening, after he won the first race and his teammate... Uh, sorry, he won the second race. His teammate won the first race with Charlie in second. He then came from 44th position, around, <laughs> out of all places, Watkins Glen, and won the race from 44th on the grid. So no one's ever counted out here, are they? <laughs> no, no, definitely not. And I think that's why Timo Paya, we've seen him competitive at various other tracks but starting at the back is not necessarily a bad thing because mm. like you say if he picks up the the pace throughout the race and it's quite a skinny circuit here there's no massive room for maneuver too wide is sort of nail biting stuff three wide it's possible it, we can't count that out jason you are in the wall at uh, turns one and two um, commonly known as big bend you've got to be careful how you say that <laughs> but um Timo Paya starting towards the tail end of the order we cannot rule him out he I still think you could put your money on him for a good result you can see Peter Reed here on the run up towards turn one being hounded by H20 cars you can see, uh, see them both in the background squirming away touch the grass and then it's a one way train to run even wider one of the H20 cars puts half a car length off uh, half a car width off the road Peter Reed well recovered though we managed to get back on the road yeah, it's easy to just get drawn out there and go flying off. Jordanin Svetanov is out on... Well, he's not on circuit. He's out on the grass anyway. But he's at least not in the pit lane. He's got just under two and a half minutes to go this session. And you can see he's just trying to stay out of everybody's way. Bless him. He's probably just thinking, I'm going to start from the grid and from the, uh, the pit lane here. He's just inspecting the tyre barriers to make sure that the marshals don't have to do any of that themselves. But we've got cars one and two at the moment, Jack, in P1 and P2. So... They're living up to their numbers. Louis Correa, though, will be hoping to have the number one on that car for next season, won't he, with Andrew Lovesy, unfortunately, not being here tonight. Yeah, I think that is the end goal going into this round for him. Build up that, that buffer that he needs to, to sort of solidify his position. And um, hopefully, with his teammates starting on pole position, he will have a bit of help to escape the grasp of the, SR, uh, escape the, grasp of the SRL cars. Cali Cabisto, Dan Mould and Michael Ellett still hounding the H20 cars in P1 and 2 and then obviously we've got SRL, P3, P4, P5 so um, having his teammate at the point end of the order with him and starting on the same row as him is really going to help his chances to get up to up to, to where he needs to be and if Sander Ware even if he just drops back and lets Louis through a bit of team's tactics this late on in the season it wouldn't surprise me if we see that Sander Ware drops back lets Louis through and maybe holds up the SRL cars a little bit if, if that is what they plan on playing now's the time to do it and now's the time to decide what you're going to do because the last thing you want to do is make a mistake here i couldn't hear that without thinking louis theroux to be honest <laughs> but um yeah it's it's going to be a bit of a team battle which is what we like to see and we've seen it this season oh david Geddes has had an issue here <laughs> he's david getting himself into trouble oh he's just overdone it on the exit of the chicane we're going to see a lot of that tonight and the guys are going to be lucky if the car doesn't come bouncing back onto the circuit uh, I must apologise, Ashley Gafail has raced in this series before. He actually has 11 points in the championship and is 33rd overall. But it still means I'm wrong. Martin Penarero goes up to ninth place. And considering that he's only been putting laps late on in this session, 
That's good going, to be honest. Arturo de Villa is 25th. Jordanin Svetnov is 26th at the moment after not putting any laps in yet. But it's those top five that are the real interesting ones at the moment. Roberto Garcia, best of the rest in number 53. Then Ashley Gafail, Ben Hicks, Martin Penarero and Amanullah Bacchus. And the qualifying session is over. The chequered flag comes out. The, uh, the overlay seems to stick on 19 minutes and 59 seconds. But trust me, it is out. And now we're going to see anyone completing their laps. Ashley Gafail is near the end of his lap as well. See what he can do across the line. No such improvement for him. We've got Matt Tempest coming across the line as well now. Through he goes. No improvement there. Who else have we got? We've got Amanullah Bacchus and Martin Penarero going through. No improvement from Amanullah. Penarero doesn't either. What about Garcia? No, I think that was an outlap. So, Sander Ware is on a lap at the moment. But I think he may be just on an outlap. We'll have to see. See what he does through the last corner. But it's going to be... I think this is going to be his first pole position of the season, Jack. And what a time to do it as well, right near the end. Yeah, it's really what him and his team will be looking for to, to get these uh, to, to get these good results. And even if it's just in qualifying, it will set you up for the race nicely. And to, to start getting results like this, this late on in the season, will give them the, the last little kick up the order that, that, that they might need. And... There we go. That's uh, that's qualifying over. 20 minutes has gone incredibly quickly. But like you say, H20 cars out on top. They will be uh, filling the front row. And then you've got uh, three SRL cars following them up. And then two privateers of Roberto Garcia and Ashley Gafail, newcomer um, to the championship as well. Like I say, he's been out before, but he will still be getting used to, to the drivers around him as well. And to, to be that competitive on a, a skinny circuit like this. And obviously, with it being a joint qualifying, he's done a brilliant job. He has indeed. So there is your grid, everybody. Sander Ware on pole position alongside Louis Correa. Championship hopeful there. Kelly Cavisto and Dan Mould make it an SRL row two with Michael Ellett fifth. Go on, son. Roberto Garcia in sixth with Ashley Gafail and Ben Hicks on row four. We then have Martin Penarero and Amanullah Bacchus rounding out your top ten. Matt Tempest and Henrico Puttenstein on row six. I'll say your name right one day, mate. Harry Bowen is 13th ahead of David Geddes with Xavi Lopez and Sebastian Hain. Then it's Alvaro Rodriguez alongside Rob Jackson, Peter Reed and Sven Dalemans, then Robert van den Heuvel, Pedro Marimon, Jason Guerrara and Timo Paya down in 24th. Just behind them, on the back row of the grid is Arturo de Villa, and hopefully we will see Jordanin Svetanov take to the grid. But there is your pole man. We'll get rid of all the unnecessary gaps on the left-hand side. But this fantastic circuit and very, very exciting circuit is about to show us just what can be done here with these little MX-5s. We have 26 cars. Svetnov is on the grid. There he is, all the way back there in Idaho. But there is your man on pole position. And alongside him is your man that is looking for the title. But the SRL cars will maybe, and I say maybe, make this difficult for Louis Correa because they want to be helping out their teammate who is not here tonight. We're just waiting for Harry Bowen to take to the grid in the Fast Cars Go Bang Machine. He'll line up just alongside David Geddes on the left-hand side of your screen there where that small gap is. Some of the guys just giving it a bit of revs now, just maybe trying to warm the engine up slightly, but I think they are already sort of pre-warmed before this. And here is Harry Bowen and round 13 of the Sunday Drivers MX5 series from Lime Rock Park here on Sim Racers World TV is away and it's a good looking launch by Sander, great launch by Louis Carrera as well, the SRL cars can't do anything about him, it looks like we've had a bit of a bad start for Michael Ellett, down into turn one then, let's see what they can all do, any shenanigans going on oh, that was Sebastian Hayne got absolutely clouted there we'll have to see what happened to him a little later but so far, Jack, I say that, yep, so far, fingers crossed, all looking clean. Yeah, all looking nice and uniform towards the pointy end of the order. Sander West still leading the way from Louis Correa, then back to the three SRL cars as they started. Kelly Cavisto, Dan Mould and Michael Elliott. You can see a very nose-to-tail affair. Sander Ware punching the hole in the air for everybody else. And you can just see it's like a freight train in the background working their way through the uphill chicane. Now up towards... Oh. 
turn six and seven. Henrico Puttenstein has returned to the pit. Henrico Puttenstein, it should be, but Sander West still leading the way from Louis Correa. Looking back now at Harry Bowen, hot on the heels of Matt Tempest for Simtech Racing. Gets a slightly better run up towards the downhill, down towards the downhill section through the final corner onto the Sam Posey straight. Doesn't look like we'll get a position change there, but the lead stays as it is. Yeah, I think uh, Henrico had a bit of an issue coming out of the chicane there, so it's not worked out for him. Look at this, though, for second place, Cavisto on the back of Correa, and behind him, SRL cars queuing up all over the place to try at this, and Ashley Gafail's got the best seat in the house for this one. We got on board with a very bright blue roll cage. I've used the uh, the phrase cork in the bottle quite a lot recently, as does a lot of other commentators, but he certainly is at the moment in stand aware. He is one very, very good-looking, not him, the car, well, no offence to him, Sander. The, uh, he's a very good-looking cork in the bottle. Look at it. It's like a train going down there through the chicane, Jack. Yeah, you'd be surprised if they're not all hinged together. It definitely looks like it. But still, number one and number two is the two H20 cars of Sander Ware. And oh, no! Correa. Look at that between the pair of them. I think Louis Correa just had a little look up the inside. They got away with that very lucky. And I'm not sure that Sander Ware's car is feeling as factory fresh as it did at the start. But that's worst case scenario the last thing they wanted to do when Louis Correa is fighting for the championship is for the two H20 cars to come together when the SRL cars P3 P4 P5 are all there queuing up like you say to pick up the pieces if there is an incident now Sander Ware going very defensive around the outside trying to fend off an SRL car also trying to give his teammate a bit of room but somehow they managed to get away with that I do not know how they did but wow <laughs> that was so so feisty I don't know what Louis Correa was trying to do, but Sander felt the need to go defensive on it and then covered him off, so it was going to happen. I don't want to look away from this, because as soon as we look away, somebody's going to go off, but I want to find out what happened at the very start and what happened also to Henrico Puttenstein. Look at them then as they go up through the chicane. Started to spread out a little bit now, actually, so I think this is perfect time to just have a look at what happened to Sebastian Hain. Oh, he got battered by one of the H20 cars. Is that Xavi Lopez again? Xavi Lopez has caused a few nightmares for some people so far in this championship. And then we can have a quick look at what happened to Henrico. I think he might have just got clipped in the chicane, but he disappeared very quickly, didn't he? Yeah, he just went straight back to the pit lane. Not sure what happened. He's got one of the fast cars go bang cars behind. I think that one could be Harry Bowen. Might be able to get a look shortly through the chicane over the curb hits oh. that right very hard and it spits him off into the barriers keeps it out of the armco and decides that instead of waiting for the train he's going to return back to the pit lane but speaking of the train we'll go to the head of it Sanderware, Louis Gray and Kelly Fisto starting to build a bit of breathing room at the moment Dan Mould and Michael Elliott slowly starting to fall off then a bit of a jump back to Roberto Garcia and Ashley Gafail Martin Panarero working his way up through a, uh, a place at the start at the demise of Ben Hicks but biggest mover in the field at the moment Rob Jackson up into P13 Martin Panarero as I said he was on his way up through the order he's had an incident Yep, commentator's curse right there for you. That was served up like gold. Jack has honestly got the touch of lightning. And again, it's... Oh, oh, oh. Tell you what, I'm not going to be buying those shock absorbers on eBay. Flipping heck, <laughs> they just got put through the bonnet. That was a real big hit there for Penarero. Hicks has just got past Gafail. And I hope, for his sake, he's not going to then Gafall back down the order. As Ben Hicks drives away, Matt Tempest comes up behind, Cali Cavisto does the fastest lap of the race, down the inside he goes, Cafael sniffs the back of the car and says hmm, yeah, factory fresh indeed as Jack said before well again, we've got great racing from this championship here Jack, they're all over each other I mean Rob Jackson right behind Bacchus right now, as oh Peter Reed's had an issue further back but we'll keep an eye on this because look at these guys, there's so many different lines you can take around a lot of this circuit, isn't there to just try and get that run out of every each and individual corner. Yeah, there oh, is hey, a oh. Big, big <laughs> look up the inside from Rob Jackson. Oh, Both of the cards. Right, a and, letter. Uh, <laughs> the backers and uh, Rob Jackson somehow managing to negotiate the chicane almost side by side. And yeah, like you say, so many different lines you can take. And I think that just varies with the momentum you carry. We're going to keep on going back to it. These cars don't have the biggest power figures in the world. So momentum is absolutely key. And if you come out the corner with a bit more momentum, you can afford to go defensive, go off the racing line because you know you've got that bit of a bit of a gap that you can almost sacrifice to 
to keep the position. I think we've had a change of position a little further up that, or they're just side by side. Louis Carrera and Cali Cavisto swap positions very briefly on mm. the timing tower on the left hand side of his screen, but somehow Louis Carrera is still in front, managing to fend off the advances from all three SRL cars now. But all of this means Sanderware might start to build a bit of a gap, and he's going to work towards what he's been aiming for this entire season. Look at this, Jordanin Svetanov at the the tail end of the order under pressure from Jason Guara. Never mind, he's trying to put the pressure on Jason Guara. Change of position there while both of them trying to get past Pedro Maramon. Yeah, the pair of them just trying to make their way up the order. We've seen Jordanin being very good before. He's gained five places so far. Nearly the biggest mover in the field. Harry Bowen's just had a bit of a blink in and out and I think that's what it may have been for Louis Correa before. You know, Louis does have intermittent internet, to say the least. Easy for me to say. Actually, Gafail has just... Oh, actually, Sander where? What's happened to Sander? Has he had a slowdown? Oh, has he just come across the front of Michael Elliott? You can't do that, Sander. Use your mirrors, mate. Mirror signal manoeuvre, sunshine. That was close stuff there. It must have been a slowdown, surely. We'll have to have a look. Let's see what goes on here. Yeah, it does look yeah. like it. Yeah, definitely. He just dropped down so cleanly. As Oh, no, Ashley Gafail has had a fail at turn one. I'm not going to stop using that, I'm sorry. Oh, Javi Lopez as well has claimed another victim, I think, in the form of Alvaro Rodriguez. The two of them are teammates as well. Oh, no, that's going to go down like a cup of cold sick. Oh, no. Javi, what have you done? <laughs> he just <laughs> headbutts his teammate out of the way at turn one. Entertaining as ever, though, from Javi Lopez. And this is the battle for the lead again, Jack. Now it's kicking off. Cavisto getting in front of Correa. Yeah, so Cali Cavisto looking to go the long way round through the chicane. Almost gets the move done, but Louis Correa has the preferred line, so the Venezuelan still leading the way. That's Cali Cavisto <laughs> running very wide. His teammate is there to pick up the position. So he's H20 car leading simulation racing leagues, leading simulation racing leagues. Then we get back to Sander Ware trying to recover from the earlier incident. And look at this, Dan Mold right underneath the uh, the rear bumper of Louis Correa looking to the outside now. The position has changed. He will have to go the long way around at Big Bend. You can see Louis Correa pitching the car in still side by side around the outside. If Dan Mold can pull this off, It'll be a brilliant move, a oh. bit of door banging there, a bit more. Louis Correa elbows his rival out towards the edge of the circuit. And the person that made up the most from that is his teammate, Sanderwehr. Two positions in the space of two corners and back up to P2. Nicely done. I don't think Dan left the room there, in all honesty. Calais was on the apex and on the kerb. And Dan, I don't know where he expected him to go, so contact was inevitable. But he's still in third place, still chasing down Sander. But now this is perfect for Louis Correa's championship. Andrew Lovesy not here tonight can get no points from this so Louis needs to go for it he needs to try and get the fastest lap now get some extra points and see what comes of it so got a race on our hands because Roberto Garcia is behind Michael Ellett now as well in the background Matt Tempest and Amanola Bacchus are side by side Rob Jackson's gained eight places in this race so far Jack he's flying isn't he yeah, we looked back at him a few moments ago and he'd gained five, now up eight. And I'm sure a couple of those might be from incidents, but he has been carving his way up through the order now, trying to pick off his teammate of Matt Tempest. So an extra car's width, I think, will be required for this one as they go down the Samposi straight for the ninth time of asking. 25 laps is the race length today. Rob Jackson doing what he can to get up the inside. There you go, late on the brakes, throws it up the inside. His teammate obviously gives him plenty of room, and I thought that was Harry Bowen going to have a late look, but there's still a bit of time between those two. And at this point, I wouldn't be surprised if we see Rob Jackson in the top five. Yeah, indeed, he's doing very well. Oh, Van den Heuvel gets away with that, to say the least. He could have been dragged way out wide there as one of the Simtech racing cars goes past him. Jordanin Svetanov's gained seven places in this race at the moment, but... He's not making as many advances as we expected. Pedro Marimon's going with him. And, I mean, I say that Pedro made a nuisance to himself. Might have sounded a bit unfair because Pedro's very quick. So he was as quick as the leaders at Silverstone. But he's uh, he's had a bit of issues before. Oh, Xavi Lopez. <laughs> Honestly, every race rim's like a soap opera, isn't it? Yeah, it's... Uh Speaking of soap, it's almost like Red Bull Soapbox race with what's left of that Mazda <laughs> MX-5. Lots of bits of bodywork bent and crumpled. Definitely destined Ugh. for the scrap. That one, that might be a slowdown for a Jordanin Svetanov. He had to breathe in, aiming for that gap. Through oh, the no. All the contact in the background. That's a big hit for Jason Guara into the wall at the downhill. I think he had a bit of contact with Martin Penarero, <laughs> just as we were mentioning how well he was doing. Let's see what happened. Martin Penarero went wide. He's on the grass, loses the rear, jumps on the brakes, trying to avoid the contact. But sadly, there was um, there was Jason Guara there to uh, to almost deal with uh, with Martin Penarero's moment. 
Yeah, he was the uh, the unfortunate victim in that one, I'm afraid. Very, very unfortunate indeed for him to have to suffer that fate, but that's motorsport. Look at this at the moment then at the very front. These guys are getting on with it well and truly. We're not even halfway through the race yet. Side by side, Dan Mould and Cali Cavisto. Cali down the inside on the brakes. Dan says, no, have that. <laughs> it's like Robot Wars through there. Cali Cavisto sideways now. He's going to lose out to Roberto Garcia. He puts himself on the grass. He's having a bit of a drift. And through the middle, Ben Hicks says, come on, sort it out, lads. Let's crack on with this. Get on the throttle. But to me, it was just a bit opportunistic there from Cali Cavisto. And then he just made a bit of a mess of it, didn't he? He went down the inside, tightened his own racing lineup. And these SRL cars are bouncing off each other here at the moment like castanets. Look at them. Yeah, it's, it's crazy to see that uh, not even halfway through the race and they're still battling nose to tail. And we've seen bits of contact in between uh, all of these battles, namely between the teammates of Sander Ware and Louis Crea and now Dan Mould and Calais Cavisto. So the last thing you want to do is have contact with your teammates. One mm. of the number one rules of motorsport, do not hit your teammate as a driver and we've seen two separate teams on two separate occasions clatter into each other peter reed through the final chicane touches the grass on the exit does he fire it into the arco oh. yes he does very very heavily i think that might have blown the engine yes so the engine internals now becoming externals helping that along through the downhill but michael <laughs> ellett i think is trying to get back past dan mold but dan still fending off one of his teammates he's managed to get gallic avisto into uh, into his review mirrors but michael ellett destined to get out of them yeah, that was, uh, like you say, engine externals, engine peripherals, <laughs> all sorts of mess now, I'm afraid. But still, he's going to get back out there. He's got a fast repair, so he can get back into the race and see what he can do. But this is a great battle between the SRL cars at the moment. Jordanin Svetanov has gained nine places now. So too, into P9, as Rob Jackson. And actually, that was the move we saw earlier, wasn't it, as he got past Matt Tempest. So ignore Chaz, his memory's going. I'm getting old. Dan Mould, he'll be trying to get old, trying to catch up with Sander Ware. Sander's having a good run at the moment. Rodriguez has just lost out to Svetanov, which means Svetanov is now the biggest mover in the field. And why wouldn't you be with a livery that dazzling? It'll scare everyone out of the way. But the Bulgarian driver again, being very entertaining to watch. But your race leader, Louis Correa, 2.3 seconds to the good at the moment, Jack. And, well, unless he makes a mistake, this is a dream performance for him for his championship. Yeah, it really is. And we knew that the H20 cars and the simulation racing lease cars would be battling it away through the final half of the season. And they've definitely paid up. Louis Correa, Louis Correa going into this round, the trailing prospect in P2 in the championship standings. But still, even after all that pressure and a bit of contact with his teammate, has managed to drive his race perfectly for the moment, just ticking past the halfway point. And Louis, he's only halfway there, so a lot can change. But it is looking good because he does have Sander Ware, his teammate, playing rear gunner. And if he has to, he will, I'm guessing, put a put a bit of gap uh, between himself and the uh, and the SRL cars, just slowing them down a little bit, just to sort of solidify Louis Gray's position. And that does mean Louis Gray can afford to back off, but not too much, because we know these SRL cars can just see through the cracks. And there you go, they're right up on you again. Yeah, they've they've all uh, they've all been to a rodeo before I think you could say these guys they know what they're doing when it comes to very close and competitive racing so I can't wait to see what they show us this evening for the rest of this race but so far it is Michael Ellett and Dan Mould they're doing their very best to catch up with Sander as oh Jordanin Svetanov has just very quickly caught up with Pedro Marimon I think Pedro made a bit of a mistake yeah he did go off track just before the chicane let's see what Jordanin can do here Carries a nice wide line to try and get a good run through the chicane. It's clever stuff, that. It's nice racecraft. He misses the apex on the left-hander a bit, so in the end, it ends up actually hindering him a bit. He wants to get a good run out the final corner and try and get a slipstream down the straight onto the back of Pedro Maramon. Pedro knows this, and he's over to the right-hand side already, defending to his best ability. What can he do now? Over to the left-hand side he goes. We've got a car off ahead of him. Sven Dalemans has gone off, and, oh, he's going to join him. By the look of it, Jordanin just tries a little bit too hard into turn one, I'm afraid. Alvaro Rodriguez has also gone off, and that means Martin Penarero has gone through. That's one. That's two. Thank you very much. Yeah, Martin Penarero picking up the positions that I think he's in desperation of at the moment. He went into this round sixth in the championship, and Sander Ware, his, uh, his rival, 
Uh, behind him in the championship is up there in second place and Dan Mould is up there in third place so Martin Panarero desperate to gain some points back just to try and keep him in the running for his uh, his top five finish in the championship obviously Bram Class currently in fifth in the championship and no show this evening as well so he's really going to throw a spanner in the works for the championship so uh, I can't wait to see the standings after this round but for the moment, all eyes on Louis Gray and Martin Benarero using all the track and using all the grit by the looks of it. Sideways through the chicane up towards or down towards. I'm going to keep on saying that down towards the downhill <laughs> section of the circuit onto the Sam Posty straight. But all eyes on Louis Gray are still leading the way, extending his gap up to 3.2 seconds now. Yeah, he's doing a wonderful job. Just opening it up 10th after 10th. A lap here just over a minute, but even still, he's only a 10th or so a lap quicker. Setting off. Oh, he's done it again. Deja vu. Martin Penarero made it past him last time, and then Van den Heuvel's going to go through as well. So Svetnov is chucking these positions away now. Pedro Marimon and Rob Jackson are the two highest movers in the field. Marimon's got seven places gained. Rob Jackson still on nine, but he's trying to catch up with the South African driver Amanula Bacchus just ahead of him. Sander Wears dropped down to third place temporarily here as Dan Mulder out of nowhere has caught up with him. Now we're going to see how this move gets finished, but I want to look back and see what happened there to Sander Webb, but look at that, Dan Mould's got a lightning run down the straight, and all of a sudden, Michael Ellett's looking feisty in this as well, oh, they're close together into turn one, a little bit of contact, right front to left rear, Sander's back down the inside, oh, boys, this is getting feisty, very feisty indeed, I want to see what happened between the pair of them just before this, so Sander's just lost time, and then he's got on the grass, and he just has to get out of it, so... He's just caught him on pure pace by the look of it, Jack. And this fight has come alive now. No more rear gunner for Louis Correa. No, this has really opened the floodgates for Dan Mould. All he needs to do is make sure he tells his teammate, Michael Ellett, there in P4 to uh, to keep all the uh, all the pressure on Sander West, slow him down as much as possible and let Dan Mould uh, disappear into the distance. Sander has a little look up the inside. Maybe it's just one of those differing lines that you mentioned earlier, Chaz, but it has gained him a bit of time. Stamps on the loud pedal up to, oh, down towards the down uh, the downhill <laughs> of turn, I think that's turn 10 or turn 11, pardon me. But Roberto Garcia, we've seen it already. He ends up with some pretty good, uh, pretty good viewing throughout these races he's just seeing it pretty much a championship fight unfold in front of him while he's still racing around having a great time what a way to spend your sunday evening eh roberto's <laughs> going to be absolutely loving it so round turns one and two we go big bend not the uh, the big tower in london through the long left hand now this is a corner that's changed slightly over the years it used to be a bit sharper on the second part but it's more of a sort of long left hander is one piece now it used to be double apex pretty much but now Garcia onto the back of these guys in front and like you said Jack, he just gains these good results, he's got good viewing he's very under the radar but doing a smashing job of it, gets a nice run out of there and while the guys in front are all chasing each other and focusing on their lines, he's just keeping to his own line and doing this the right way at the moment, he looks down the inside of Michael Ellett makes him jump out of his skin by the look of it, by the body language of the car but he, he's just compromised his own line there and lost him a bit of time he should have been a bit more patient there with that move Sander Ware, though, holding on to third place. Louis Correa is off in the distance, and he's got one of his teammates ahead of him on track there. Just trying to see who that is that's just come to start. It's like, that's actually Xavi Lopez. So let's see if the soap opera comes to Louis Correa, shall we? Yeah, let's, uh, let's hope that this position change is done as quickly and as cleanly as possible. You can just see in the background still fighting tooth and nail for this position. Sander Ware and Michael Elliott for the final spot on the podium, of course, still battling away. And just to see the cars cornering pretty much sideways, but still incredibly quickly. It's, it, it reminds me pretty much of racing a go-kart. They, they corner sideways. Yes, they slow you down. It's all about momentum. Avoid the curbs as, or avoid the, the bigger curbs as much as possible. And when you stamp on the anchors, try and keep it in a straight line. And for the moment, that's exactly what Louis Greyer has been doing for H20 Esports, leading the way. And he is definitely making the most of Andrew Lovesy's non-attendance this evening. You can see Xavi Lopez trying to read the car behind, letting him know, letting his, inten letting his intentions be known. Jumps over to the right-hand side. Let's hope he lifts out of the throttle. No, no decides <laughs> that he's going to pull back across Louis Gray, I'm sure, shouting over the team radio. There you go, out the way, just about for Xavi Lopez. Sideways into Big Ben for Louis Gray. But just to see 
the composure of Louis and more like the composure of Michael here sideways up the, oh, up the inside. Oh, Sander, Sander no. Oh, no, Sander Ware off the road. Oh, Sander, he was holding on so, so well to that position, but it just got to him in the end. A little bit of a mistake into turn one, and that was that, I'm afraid. Straight on he goes. Sven Delmans is all over the back of Pedro Marimont as they go down the straight. But that was such a shame for Sander. He coped with the pressure so well up to that point. But it's easy to do there, isn't it, in turn one? You gain so much speed, and based on your run out of the final corner, you have a different amount of speed every single time you get to turn one. It can sort of cause a domino effect as you get onto the brakes, and I think that Sander just got caught out by that there, I'm afraid. But now, well, it's still no rest for the wicket, is it? Cali Cavisto on the back of him now. But Dan Mould and Michael Ellett have two SRL cars on the podium. Yeah, it's a very strong night for simulation racing leagues. Obviously, coming off a, uh, a double podium at Silverstone with Dan Mould and Andrew Lovesy. And Andrew Lovesy going into this round in the lead of the championship and then to still have two cars on the podium after all that has happened. Well, for the moment, though, because Roberto Garcia, like you mentioned, is slowly catching up and all it takes is one little mistake from the teammates, get a bit complacent. They're sat there thinking, oh, this is great for us. We're doing really well, both on the podium. Slight mistake. And there you go, Roberto Garcia picking up a position. And you mentioned the run up towards turn one and it's so key because that run starts pretty much from the chicane um, at, at going towards the downhill. That's where you put your foot to the floor and just keep it pinned if you're brave enough right the way up towards turn one again. you can. I think there's Xavi Lopez up ahead trying to, oh. uh, trying to get get out of the way of the SRL cars and placing his car in the middle of the road. I think he's going to leave a bit of room. Peels over to the middle of the track. Maybe just to put a bit of pressure on the SRL cars. Place into the hands of Roberto Garcia. But with only five laps of the race remaining and Louis Correa still with a handsome lead, five and a half seconds, it's going to take a big old mistake from himself to get the SRL cars back in contention for a <laughs> win. <laughs> Mind you, Wingman has took him in, boys. Flipping heck. Around the final corner there, Sander Ware and Kelly Cavisto just swapping a bit of paint. Wow, that was uh, argy-bargy. It was Arturo de Villa that was trying to get out of the way of the uh, the SRL cars, or trying to be a nuisance for the <laughs> SRL cars. Ella is now ahead of Mould, though, after that run down the straight. And again, we're going to go on board with Garcia again. He gets another fantastic view. They all like bright green in these two camps, obviously. But uh, look at this. The pair of them, and we saw it at Silverstone, didn't we, a few weeks ago, Jack? These SRL boys are not scared of fighting each other. They love to have a good scrap on track. Yeah, definitely. I think it's just having the confidence with each other. And we saw, obviously, or we're seeing this race as well, Michael Ellett with his stable mate Dan Mould just battling away. They are teammates and they've got a car behind them, willing and ready to pick up those positions. And they're still trying to gain on Louis Gray. They're just battling away. They're more than happy to uh, to rub door mirrors. Roberto Garcia wanting to rub his front bumper on Dan Mould's rear. Very close to the uh, to the tail end there look at this ben hicks trying to negotiate oh. Calais Cristo, that's compromised himself for amanola bacchus through the downhill section of the circuit they've got to be careful here because rob jackson and matt tempest both the simtech racing cars still carving the way up through the order rob jackson still up nine positions that will have helped him though catch on to the tail end of amanola bacchus the timing screens are light with the gaps michael Ellett and dan mold almost side by side there's a change of position there up towards turn one and there we go up towards turns three and four now dan mold around the outside upper position uh, for the moment, though, these two constantly changing positions. But look at the timing screen, Chaz. Sander Ware is pretty much in the middle of uh, in the middle of a battle he doesn't really want to be because he saw Kelly Cavisto in his rearview mirror. He thought, OK, I'll just sit here for the moment. And now he's got Ben Higgs, Amanola Bacchus, Rob Jackson and Matt Tempest all catching onto the tail end of the train. No, oh, no, Roberto Garcia lights it up, gets contact with Michael Ellett. Michael smacks into him. I was just going to say he's just gone up to third place, but he's binned it and he's off. And that hit is surely going to hurt the car. Now, can Sander get back in front and regain that podium position? I had a bit of a moment not long ago because I saw a car go off to the right. I thought it was Cali Cavisto, but it was actually Arturo de Villa getting rid of himself out of the way of these guys on the final lap, or oh, sorry, final corner, I should say, as they went up and then down to the downhill up right-hander. But look at this, though. Sander where now? He's got to think about Cali Cavisto behind him still. Ben Hicks and Amanul Abacus had a great battle as well. Alvaro Rodriguez has put it off the circuit again. He's back on. He's still there. Look at this. Down the straight, Ellett has lost all of his pace into turn one. And look at the bumper hanging off. Nice to see that from iRacing with a new damage model on these cars. But there you go. Sander back into a podium position for H20 Esports Racing. Can he hold on, though? That's the next task. 
It's got to hold on from Kelly Cavisto. And as we were saying before, Jack, one of the most consistent drivers in the series, if not the most consistent. <sighs> How are you going to defend from that? Well, there you go. <laughs> He's run a bit wide into the chicane. Oh, this is going to be difficult for him. And Michael Ellick with half a front bumper. He's still trying to fight as well. This is epic stuff. It, it really is. And, yeah, it's underwear. He's got his hands full trying to defend and uh, defend, uh, defend <laughs> this from doesn't defend him. <laughs> and Michael Ellett. But he's also got his sights set on Dan Mould because look at that gap. Now he's come down three tenths. Whether Dan Mould has got some sort of issue, I don't know. He's got a bit of damage, I think. It could just be the way the car is painted. But pulling over to the right-hand side of the road is Dan Mould. <laughs> Maybe a bit of a slowdown. Sunderwear somehow... Now back up into second position for the moment. Stamps on the anchors up towards turn one. And there you go. Sandware up into <laughs> second position. I don't know how he's managed to do this. Dan Mould in third. Cali Cavisto in fourth. All still changing for position up towards oh, turn well, three off. four. We're going on to the final few laps of the race. Michael Ellett, you can see they're off at turn one. Sandware and Dan Mould still side by side. Now up towards turn five, <laughs> chopping across the nose. And there's only two laps of the race remaining and championship points available. And they're battling like it's the first race of the season. This is amazing stuff. I'm not quite sure what happened to Ellett. Cali Cavisto now down the inside, over the kerb. Nope, none of that. Sandware's made a mistake there. And he, now he gets a hit in the rear as well. Oh, it's all kicking off between these guys. Louis Correa is going to watch this back and think, wow, did all this really go on? Ben Hicks down the inside now. Three wide into the chicane. Don't do it, boys, please. My heart can't take it. Ben makes a little bit of contact with the number 37 of Cali Cavisto. Manages to hold it. Dan Mould now gets alongside Sander Ware. Louis Correa has started the final lap already. 14 seconds up the road. Nearly 15. And look at this as well. Rob Jackson, 12 places gained. He's now sixth. He's absolutely flying. They're going into the pit lane as they go down the straight here, Jack. I'm going to lose my mind. One of my monitors is going to fall over. Yeah, somehow, Sander West still managing to fend off Dan Mould after every single advance. A bit of a bump and run through turn one. Touring car strategy coming out here. Dan Mould bumping the tail end of Sander West. You can see this now. Roberto Garcia losing out to Sorry, Ashley Gafail. But look at this. Still bumping away. Sander West getting a bit of a hit sideways through turn six. A bit what? of a heavy... <laughs> Clip there still somehow. Sandaware is the lead party still with Dan Mould and Kaleka Visto chasing away. Ben Hicks ready to pick up all the places. Rob Jackson up 11 positions now in sixth position. Don't rule him out for a top five finish if all this goes wrong. But somehow Sandaware in the lead, and we've forgotten about him because he's disappeared into the distance. Sadly, he's not getting a look at this. But Louis Correa towards the line, Chaz. Louis Correa takes another win and a perfect evening for him. Race win, no points for Andrew Lovesy. Max points for Louis Correa. And somehow, I mean, he could lose out in the slipstream here, but somehow, Sander Ware, round the final corner. Is he going to hold on ahead of Dan Mould? It's looking like it. They're both going to get podium positions, though. Sander Ware second, Dan Mould third, Cali Cavisto fourth, then Ben Hicks, Rob Jackson. Take a bow, son. 12 places gained to six. Matt Tempest just behind him. Ashley Gafail, Roberto Garcia, Amanola Bacchus gets a top 10. Harry Bowen's going to finish in 11th place. And Pedro Marimon, 10 places gained to get 12th. But wow, oh wow, Jack. That was unbelievable. I want to see what happened to Michael Ellett. Oh, something's broken. Oh, and then he gets a smack off Amanullah Bacchus. And that car is, yeah, it, it's not in its best state, is it? Let's say that. No, not what we like to see after all the effort put in throughout the race. He still gets a P20, fit, a P20 finish purely because of the effort he puts in. At the, uh, at the start of the race. But Louis Correa, what a drive. I know the battle in the background will have helped him, but up towards the front, there's exactly what he needs to do for the championship and puts him in a prime position going into the final couple of rounds. Somehow, he's joined on the podium by his teammates, Sandoware. I think we saw him down in fifth or maybe sixth at one point, and he got back up to uh, got back up to second. Dan Mould, the SRL car that managed to get on the podium, followed by Cali Cavisto, Ben Hicks, and Rob Jackson up 12 positions. But... I don't know what to make of that. That is a race I'm going to have to watch back time and time and time again. Well, I'll tell you what. A little bit of a treat here, everybody, because I want to see... I'm try, I've got to try and figure it out now when it all happens. So here's white flag in the air. Hang on. No, I'm going to go back a little bit for that. So this is where Sander Ware goes past for P2. Let's just watch this back again. So Sander and Dan Mould side by side. There is a little bit of a touch here as they go through the right. But he just gets away with it. And now, Cali Cavisto's on the grass, side by side with Dan Mould, just behind this. 
And then Ben Hicks, he's got the best view in the house, really, for all this, because you can see the two SRL cars. They slow each other up a bit, but Sanders already gone slow. I think he got a slowdown. Dan Mould decides to just smack into the back of him. I mean, admittedly, he could have gone around him, but he could have backed out. Ben Hicks is then down the inside, breaks a little bit early, watches these guys have their own moment. A little bit of contact with Cali Cavisto. They manage to keep it together, tries the cutback. Dan Mould somehow gets the pace alongside Sander. Loses out because he's on the outside. This is when the white flag comes out now. So this is onto the final lap. They're almost in the pit lane as they all go onto the grass on the right-hand side. All four cars on the grass there. Down the straight into turn one. Dan Mould putting loads of pressure on Sander. A little bit of a tap, as Jack said. Almost a bump and run tactic. Kelly Cavisto holding station. A little bit more contact between Sander and then Dan Mould. Through the left-hander. This is where they got lucky, isn't it, Jack? Because there was a big hit here. There's one hit. And then there was another one, which just unsettled both cars. But they still managed to carry on somehow. Yeah, I don't know how they did it. Now onto the back straight, which isn't straight. Sander West still leading the way from Dan Mould there. But look how close they are. This is after 25 laps of racing. After racing what seems like everybody on the grid. And still with uh, with Louis Greyer up the road. But Dan Mould not wanting to give Sander an inch. You can see him filling his mirrors. And then you've got to remember that Dan Mould wants to sort of ease off a little bit. Because he knows he's got the security of Cali Cavisto, his teammate, behind. But if he does that, that's then going to make his teammate vulnerable to Ben Hicks, who had the best seat in the house. And I'm sure he's going to save that replay and just sit there watching it forever. Because what a seat he had. That was absolutely unbelievable stuff. I'm going to turn the music down a little bit because I think I put it on a bit louder. I'm just excited. Louis Correa takes the win then. Car 2, P1, and then it's Car 1, P2 for Sandy Ware. But what a brilliant drive he had. The two SRL cars of Dan Mould and Cali Cavisto, third and fourth, with Ben Hicks in fifth, best of the rest. Then two Simtech racing cars, Rob Jackson and Matt Tempest. Three privateers, all starting with a five as well. Ashley Gafail, Roberto Garcia, and Anne Manola Bacchus round out your top ten. We then have Harry Bowen with Pedro Marimon and Sven Dalemans ahead of David Geddes and Martin Penarero, followed by Sebastian Hain, who got absolutely nailed at the start of the race, so a good recovery from him. Robert Van Den, take your guess, Hoovel in 17th. Alvaro Rodriguez, 18th, with Timo Paya, one lap down in 19th. Also a lap down was Michael Ellett, Xavi Lopez, Arturo de Villa, Jason Guerrara, and Peter Reed. Four laps down, unfortunately, was Jordanin Svetanov. Didn't quite see what happened to him in the end there. And then Henrico Puttenstein drops down and finishes at the back of the pack. But an amazing race indeed here from the Sunday Drivers MX5 series. And I just want to have a quick run back of everything that happened there. We're going to put the slow-mo on. And, well, the first person we can talk to is probably the guy that didn't really realise that all of that went on behind him. But Louis Correa joins us in the booth. Louis, another win in your championship com uh, campaign here when Andrew loves he doesn't get any points. You must be absolutely delighted, mate. Yeah, actually, it was quite nice. I, I don't know what happened at the beginning. I think I, I got a contact with Dan, and then after that, I... I don't know what happened there. Uh, uh, Sander told me there was a lot of battle there. Yeah, there was. It, honestly, the last couple of laps of that one, you're going to have to uh, go and watch back the stream because that was one of the greatest races that Jack and I have called in a long time. There was so much going on. But I suppose you were probably a bit grateful to be away from all that because it turned out to be a bit of an easy drive at the front for you, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. After a, a little bit of battle in the first five laps, I think. Uh, well, after that, I just keep going and try to be to not mess up and, and finish the, the race. Well, you certainly did that, mate. And uh, of course, as we said, Andrew Lovesy not here this evening means that you've gained a lot of points on him in the championship and only one more round to go. So, how are you feeling about that final round? Are you nervous at all, or are you quite confident that now you can get it wrapped up? Well, uh, I just want to be cautious <laughs> and try to to give the best and try to win it. You know. Well, that's what it's all about, mate. You know, you've got to uh, you've got to be a bit cautious sometimes in these championships just to make sure you get the most points out of it. But very well done from me and Jack. And before we let you go, do you want to give a shout out to anybody? Ah, no, not nothing special. Thank you to you guys for for the streaming. It's always fun to to see. Thank you very much, mate. Well, we hope you enjoy watching it back and we'll see you in a couple of weeks' time at Silverstone for the finale, mate. Okay, great. See you guys. Cheers. Nice evening. And you.
Louis Correa there, absolutely top guy to speak to as well, lovely chap. And another lovely chap that we can have a chat to here, who's probably had to change his t-shirt from sweating way too much because that was an <laughs> unbelievable race. Sander Ware joins us. Sander, that was just, I mean, me and Jack are still in disbelief. That was phenomenal. That was just messy. It was messy. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot going on. I mean, how was it from your perspective? I mean, outside it may have looked a bit more dramatic than it was inside the car, but it certainly looked like you had to think about a lot there with the SRL guys behind. Ah, it was terrible. It was terrible. <laughs> it was. Uh, uh, I was all over the place, and uh, I'm not sure. I think I have to upgrade uh, from my Logitech to to Fanatec soon because uh, I have no consistency at all, and I'm. Uh, I think I. Yeah. I managed to get second uh, because of other things than my my driving because uh, it was really <laughs> I, I knew I, I had a good lap in 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 qualifying which was by a little bit of a uh, a mystery lap to me because uh, I put out a, a time that I didn't didn't realize before also and uh, so I knew my race pace would be a little bit uh, less than than the rest of them but uh, yeah <laughs> I was struggling. Yeah, it certainly looked like uh, you were soaring away at the wheel in a lot of places, but it looked like a lot of fun out there. I mean, you guys at H20 Esports Racing and the Simulation Racing Leagues guys, you always have a good fight together, don't you? Yeah, yeah, it, 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 that's the nice nice thing about, about these two teams. And, uh, you know, normally it's Louise against the rest, against the four uh, SRL guys. So uh, I'm happy to, now to, to, join the, to join the party sometimes, but... Uh, <laughs> Well, today was actually. Uh, <laughs> I think I don't. I don't deserve to be on the second uh, spot. But uh, you know, I, I don't know what happened before me. I think also some some backmarkers got involved, and then when I got past Dan, I was completely out of control, and he hit me uh, several times on the back. So I apologize for that. But um, I, I was just happy to stay in front uh, and uh, defending where I uh, where I could defend. Well, it certainly looked like a lot of fun, mate, and we enjoyed calling it as well. You'll uh, you'll enjoy watching that broadcast back. Um, I've had a, uh, an update in the chat. Is there two more rounds after this one, or is it just the one now? No, it's two more rounds. Uh, it's Texas combined next in three weeks, and then the final round in in Alton Park. Ah, okay. So. It was it's my fault then for the calendar. I I didn't update my calendar, so when I was reading it out before, I was like, oh, there's only one more race meeting left. But I'm glad that you're going to Alton Park though, because that's my local circuit and my very very favourite. So you can count on me being around for that one, because, well, calling the this sort of racing at Alton Park, it's going to be an absolute treat, <laughs> isn't it? It is. It is. It's uh, and and uh, we are actually doing the the, the the no chicanes version, so high speed and and the high speed corners are probably a lot of the same as what we saw today. Oh, good and, lord! Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's 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 fun, but also you know it has to be fair. And uh, today I felt uh, for myself for my own performance, I was sometimes on the. Uh, well, on the edge of um, adhesion, also, so I, I, I didn't really have it in my in my control. But well, it was a bit messy. <laughs> well, I think Jack and I were on the limit of adhesion on our seats as well. We were almost falling <laughs> off in every corner. Um, before we get to the uh, well, the next broadcast, then obviously in a couple of weeks' time, is there anybody that you want to give a shout out to while you're on air, Sander? Uh, well. Um... I hope Andy will be back next uh, next race and uh, uh, all being well and uh, hopefully he can still bring the fight to to Luis. Although of course Luis is teammate, but uh, I would like to see the championship go to go down to the wire and uh, yeah, um, just a, a good good uh, showing for our team today. Mm -hmm. But uh, mainly main main thing is that everyone has fun and that all uh, all drivers all everyone on track has good battles and uh, you know it's it, in the end it's about that. It certainly is, mate. Well, great to speak to you as always, Sander. Thank you very much, and we will see you in a couple of weeks' time. Okay, guys. See you. Cheers. Well, Jack, how do we uh, how do we round out an evening like that? That was just phenomenal, wasn't it? Yeah, I'm, I'm disappointed that it's had to that it's had to come to an end, but. I'm also now really excited to hear that there are two rounds left, obviously going to Texas uh, road course combined with the oval, um, of which I've got to say a bit of a guilty pleasure I have done before. I have driven the Mazda around <laughs> the Texas oval and uh, almost tried to, to start something called Mazcar, which um, I've got to say is is pretty fun. And, and then Alton Park, like you say, an amazing circuit. And we're on the international layout by the sounds of it with no chicane. So I think, funnily enough, that is where the uh, the global Mazda Cup is this week uh, for the official racing 
on uh, on iRacing. So a lot of the drivers could be going into that with an extra little bit of practice. And Alton Park, it always produces brilliant, brilliant racing. And it does. To, to go into that round after seeing tonight on a, a circuit, which I've got to say isn't my favorite. It's, it doesn't really work with my driving style. Um, but to see the guys go into tonight with this much confidence, to go into a circuit which is a bit wider, it's a bit more lenient with the runoff and the curbs aren't as violent. The last round of the is of the series is going to be one you can't miss. You've got to make sure you come along and, and watch that. And if you are still here, obviously, here at SimRacers World TV, we are incredibly close to 1,000 subscribers, currently on 906, uh, 986, I believe. Mm -hmm. So if you are out there and you're not subscribed, please do so. It really does help out and help us get to that massive 1K milestone. Yeah, we'll be very grateful if you can. Don't forget as well, if you want to hear about other broadcasts that are coming up, do hit that bell icon as well when you subscribe so you'll get notifications about any future live streams or any videos that we're doing. And we will make sure that we bring you the best entertainment that we possibly can. As always, thank you very much, Jack. It's been an absolute pleasure. We've had a fantastic evening of commentary once again. And this has been the Sunday Drivers MX5 series on Sim Racers World TV, sponsored by H20. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Have yourselves a great evening. We'll see you in a couple of weeks at Texas. Die.